so welcome um, today I'm going to be running this little steel here this is a small 12 liter steel got online here in China again it's not illegal to uh, distill your own spirits here in China as long as you're doing it for personal consumption it's not for sale I was having a little bit of problem with this still running a tad too hot so I actually bought this fan here which I used to blow right here it actually helps to diffuse a lot of the heat um, you don't necessarily want your fan blowing here you want to keep this a constant temperature but you want to keep this as cool as possible here's a look at some of the stuff I'll be using today pretty self-explanatory this is the hydrometer, what you use to measure your alcohol content. One thing that comes with this still is this, which is a uh, submersible pump, also known as a power head. Uh, this is what you use in your average aquarium. I have my little thermometer here. I use this uh, to just monitor the water that I'm running through the still and make sure it's not getting too hot which uh, you'll see that a little bit later. One little tip is when you're running the still, it's always best not to fill this all the way up. If you fill this all the way up, you're gonna have some problems. Now I could have a little bit more in here. Um, I wouldn't go past about that point right there. Um, what I'll be running today is the cornmeal mash. Um, this is about 8% alcohol right now, so it ought to do pretty well. Still is very simple to operate. Basically, the top goes on here. This latches around here, which I'll do that. I can't do that and hold the phone. And uh, we'll get it fired up here. So I got the submersible pump down in this pan. This, this is a large pan, which I, I use instead of just running the water straight from the sink into the still. Uh, if you do it this way, you'll use a lot less water, and you'll see why, because we're going to be putting some um, plastic bottles with ice in here to keep this water temperature cooler. Um, but I don't let this water, I try not to let it get any hotter than 30 degrees Celsius. And um, so the water runs out the submersible pump, runs in through the still, comes back out the top, and it will come out of this. So once your water gets pretty hot, you can just take and stick this over in the sink, let it run out some more, and then run some uh, new cooler water into your pot. So I'm about to turn on the electric burner. Everything's pretty much set up. Um, I've not yet filled this completely up yet with water, and I've not put my ice in it, because normally it'll take about 15 minutes or so before this still gets hot enough to start evaporating some of the alcohol in there. So with this particular still, once it runs up to about 60, 60 degrees Celsius, I'll turn on the power head. It'll start pumping the cool water in. I'll turn on the fan, and then I'll back the temperature off a little bit. So I'm starting the electric burner. Um, when you start it, go ahead and run it all the way about as hot as, it, as, hot as it's going to get. You'll hear it start going, don't, don't worry about that. Uh, like I said, it'll take about 15 minutes until this is hot enough to start evaporating some of the alcohol. So you have a little bit of a wait here. I don't add my ice yet. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just put place my hand here. Once this starts getting really hot to the touch, I know that it's going to start, the temperature gauge is going to start moving. And it'll start moving pretty rapidly once it starts. So once I feel it, it's getting a little hot here, that's when I'll go ahead and put the rest of my water here and add the ice bottles, which really helps to use a lot less water. The cooler you keep this water, the better. So as you can see, the temperature's rising. Uh, with this particular still, what I want it to do is to get to about 60 degrees before I turn on the submersible pump, start pumping my cool water into there. So you can see my water right now is a nice chilly 18 degrees. So once it gets to 60, I'll engage the pump, I'll turn on that fan, let it start to diffuse the heat. I'll also back down on my temperature by one setting. At that point, it's only going to be a few seconds before you start getting some moonshine coming out. Now if you noticed, 
I'm measuring how much I'm running out at first. The manufacturer of this still calls for you to throw away your first uh, 20 milliliters. I go ahead and let it run up to about 35 just, just for the hell of it. Throw that away, you don't want to keep that. So what I'm going to do next is it's almost there, it's getting there pretty quickly at 60. I'm going to reach behind here, engage my submersible pump, try not to burn myself. And here we go, just started running out. We are now making moonshine. Again with this still I'll be throwing away my first 30 milliliters. You'll have to adjust that with the size of your still. It's important that you do this though. So now we're making moonshine. It's running out. Let's smell it. Ooh. That right there is very, very pure. Um, we're going to be making today 55% alcohol. That's where I usually like it. Some people like it a little bit stronger. A lot of people like it weaker. For me, it's a good neutral kind of middle ground, uh, which is still quite high better be careful with this 12 liter still normally I make about I could make a, around one liter to one liter and a half 55% of my moonshine that's starting now with around 8 to 10 percent mash 8 to 10 percent alcohol so what I normally do is I'll run the first 500 milliliter, uh, first 500 milliliters out let it cool down some and then test it. See where I'm at as I'm as I'm doing that. I'll just switch this. I'll just switch these jars out. You don't want to take your measurements when your alcohol is hot. You do want to let it cool down because that will throw off your uh, will throw off your percentage. Um, actually, it won't throw it off that much uh, if it's not just incredibly hot. But you want to let it be around room temperature. A lot of people want to get very uh, technical with that aspect of this. I'm just an old country boy. Uh, I know what's good and I know how to do it. As you can see, my cooling water is getting a little bit warm. I'm at 29 degrees Celsius right now. So again, all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this uh, exit tube out. I'm just going to let this water run down to about halfway. I also have more ice bottles. Once these melt, I can put back in there. Uh, once this water starts, uh, once the steel starts heating up, uh, this water will heat up fairly quickly, so you gotta watch that. Also be careful you don't take this tube out and then forget about it and run all your water out. Um, don't wanna say I've done that before, but I'm, I might have. So I've ran my water down about halfway, my cooling water. All I'm gonna do is just start running some more water into it and uh, that water coming out of here is nice and cool I'll probably put uh, a couple more a couple more uh, bottles of ice in there as you can see temperature's running nice and steady right there at 75 degrees that's exactly where I want it to be still running out some, some high proof moonshine here that is still well above 55 percent. Should be. Main thing with these stills is just keep an eye on it. Again, as you run your still, any still doesn't have to be this particular kind. You'll you'll get used to it. You'll get more familiar with it. Uh, the temperatures and whatnot that it runs good at. So my first 500 milli milliliters. It's cooled down enough to test. I'm going to go ahead and test it and see where we're at. And looks like we're, out, we're right around 65 at this point. So now what I'm doing is I'm just uh, pouring this into this jug that I have, this clean jug. Um, this is what I'll use to kind of box these together to to reach my 55% alcohol. I normally go ahead and just throw a coffee filter in the top, just in case any little any kind of floaties or anything got into my jar as I was running alcohol into it. 
This is our second jar. Um, I'm letting this run past 500 because I know that it's it's good. I've tested the first jar. Um, again, I'll probably get about a liter, 1.2 liters uh, of alcohol out of this. Um, that'll be at around 55%. Now, there'll, there'll be more alcohol running out, of course. I don't want to necessarily drink the weaker alcohol, but what I will do is I'll keep it and I'll run that in with my mash on my next uh, my next run. Second jar, again I let this one run out a little bit more. Crystal clear, I would imagine that's anywhere from 55 to 60 percent still coming out. Um, I try to keep myself busy. Sometimes uh, when you're making moonshine, you, you're just kind of sitting around waiting a little bit. But as you can see, it's about time for me to change my cooling water again. Basically, this is what I've ran so far. Um, that's probably a little more than a liter. Uh, I've ran out about 200 more milliliters. I think this is, uh, now this will probably be a little bit less than 55%. I think by the time this cools down a little bit, that's about how much I'll need to be around 55%. Doesn't matter if I'm exactly accurate. I've got one more run to do after this. Um, so if it needs to be stronger, a little weaker, I can, I can uh, you know, tweak that a little bit. The problem with the 12 liter steel is that it's uh, just a little bit too small if you're making your mash in five gallon buckets. You'll end up having to do two runs, um, which is okay, it's just a little bit more time consuming. I, I'd suggest if you're making your mash in a five gallon bucket that you go ahead and get the, the next step up from the 12 liter. I, I can't remember exactly which one that was, but it's a little bit bigger, I'm sure, that could uh, you could do the whole five gallons worth of mash in at one, in one run. So what I'm doing now is I'm still just continuing to run my still. Uh, this alcohol here, this little bit, I've smelled it. Um, I would estimate that this little bit is, a, is in the neighborhood of 40% alcohol. It's weaker than what we want. Um, by the time I let this run all the way to the top, uh, I would estimate it, it would be between 20 and 30% alcohol. I'll even keep running off a little bit more. Now obviously that's that's too weak to be drinking as moonshine, but what you do is run this through with your next uh, mash. Uh, that, uh, that'll increase the alcohol of that mash and uh, you just run it back through the still. As you can see our temperature is still hanging around 75 degrees. It's perfect, 75 degrees Celsius. Um, as the alcohol gets weaker as it lowers in percentage uh, this will start getting a little bit higher and that's how you kind of know when the temperature starts rising you kind of know that you are pretty much running all the alcohol out of it. Uh, manufacturer says you can let it run out to about 90. I find that uh, that's a little bit too much. Let it go till it's around 80, 85 at the max and then it, it'll be about time to shut your steel down. Um, right now I'm probably about an hour, hour and ten minutes into this. So as you can see, still is still running. Um, that, that's still the third jar right there. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and test what I've collected so far. I'm thinking this is going to be somewhere around 55%. Pretty close. Well, you can see that these things they always turn to the opposite side that you're looking they never turn the right way that you're facing all right so I don't know how well you can see it probably not so well um, I'm looking at right now around well, it's around 57 percent so it's pretty much there I can go just a little bit weaker with my next run so this stage I've already know that what I've ran out here so far is at 57%. It's about where I want it to be. Keeping an eye on my cooling water. You can see it's at 30 now. It's ready to be turned over again. Keeping an eye on my still temperature. 
Um, that's about at 80 right now. It's going to go up. It's going to continue to go up as that alcohol content goes down. I estimate that I'll probably fill this one up. That'll be in the range of 20, 25 percent alcohol, maybe even 30. Um, probably a good half of this one as well. That will be considerably weaker. Again, I'll combine this with my mash that I run back into the still on my next run. Just to kind of show you how well this, this small fan helps. Um, I can just leave my hand right there, no problem. This side, that is very hot to the touch. You, you can barely even touch that. So even that little fan, it helps tremendously to diffuse the heat. Um, I would recommend that if you do get one of these kinds of steels, pick yourself up a little fan like that. It'll definitely help you to keep it, keep your runs going cooler. So as I'm running out uh, the rest of this alcohol out of the still that I'm going to include with my mash, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and pour some of this into these bottles that I found on the internet. Um, they're pretty cool looking. Uh, it's always, to me, a little bit better to, when you break out some moonshine, go ahead and break it out in a bottle. You know, sometimes we break it out at the clubhouse. Uh, have some people, you know, let them have a taste or whatever. It just looks better than just pouring it right out of a plastic jug. So yeah, you can see how clear it is. This is uh, some really nice tasting moonshine too, I have to say. 